Hi and welcome back to our lost estate. It's been a busy few weeks for me and Claire here. We've been working hard on the garden in between all the rain, but we've also had to go back to the UK for a couple of weeks each, which has delayed things a bit. But we're back here now working on new videos and new posts for our Instagram and Pinterest, um, even occasionally on Facebook and our Patreon. So do check them out. But while we were back in the UK, a number of our friends had, who've also visited us here have been saying that our, as good as our videos are, it, when you come and see it, it's just a whole different scale. So we've been looking at ways to try and get better footage, better views of our estate. And so we have a drone. We actually bought this drone about a year ago but it's only about now that we've got to actually flying it. And this video was meant to be me learning to fly the drone and flying it around, giving some beautiful shots of our lost estate. Carry on watching though, and you'll see what's happened. So before I get into that, this drone is the Quinix K8. We got this about a year ago and when we were researching it, we found all these adverts and posts about how amazing this drone is. It had all the features we were looking for with a camera on a gimbal, obstacle avoidance, GPS tracking, video recording at 4K, all of that sort of stuff. And the shots that they had from it were looking fantastic. And the price point on it was also really, really good. So we thought, great, we'll give that a go and bought this drone. It arrived promptly, no problems at all with the delivery, opened it up and it looked about as I was expecting. So quite small and foldable, the arms fold out to bring the propellers, nice and easy to carry about with you portably anywhere that you want to go. Nice and light as well. I managed to connect the controller to it and eventually managed to connect my phone in. That was a bit of a challenge, and I, at the time, I think my, the phone I had was a little bit old. Um, it was an old Android phone, and I don't think it was quite up to the app because the app crashed when I started trying to take videos or um, photos through it. But I tried it with Claire's phone. She had a newer iPhone and that worked perfectly fine. So I put it down to my phone being too old. Since then I've upgraded my phone and that's working fine as well. After that, I took it out for a quick flight just to make sure I could get it to take off and land and that it was all working okay. And it was, and then put it away for another day when I was ready to go and actually try flying and learning and hovering and recording some good footage of the whole of our lost estate. That's about a year ago and it's only the last few weeks that we've actually got around to that. So I took it out into the field and well, take a look at what happened. Out here with the drone again and today it's a little bit windier than it was the first time I tried to fly it so I thought that'd be an interesting challenge to see how it reacts to a higher wind. So here goes nothing. It's 
So yeah, I can definitely feel that wind pulling it to the side. Ooh. Let's go find it. So there you'll see that was my first flight up in the field and it was a bit tricky to start with. It had a tendency to drift sideways or forwards or back and that wasn't down to too much wind because it was quite a calm day and so, so I had to do a bit of work calibrating it. I figured that's relatively normal. Managed to get it reasonably calibrated in the end so it would hover fairly well unless there was a big gust of wind to blow it sideways. I took that as being relatively normal and so I got a bit of footage. You'll see there's some lovely shots of the roof of the barn and stables um, but that was about it. Thankfully also it built up a bit of confidence that I felt okay I'm reasonably in control of this. I can fly it somewhere slightly more restricted. So by the time I'd got all of that done, the battery had run out. So I took it back inside, put the battery onto charge and then had to wait a couple of days for the rain to go away and another calmish day. This time I thought, great, I'm happier with flying it. I know it's reasonably calibrated. I'll try taking some footage along Bull Plage up at the top of the lion steps. And so took it out, got it there. And on my first launch, it charged off forwards away from me. Clearly not calibrated at all, which confused me a bit. Um, but managed to bring it back, managed to get a bit more calibration into it to stop it drifting so much. I found it had a slight turn clockwise on it as well, but it wasn't a major problem there. So I thought, okay, let's try and get a bit of footage. Launched it again and started flying it along Bull Plage. And with the slight drift there was and the little breeze, I managed to get it stuck five meters up in a tree. <laughs> so a bit of recovery time and managed to get that back again and thought, okay, let's try one more time. This time kept it slightly further away from the trees and managed to get a reasonable flight along Bull Plage, although it did have that turn to the right all the way along. Um, and towards the end of it, it managed to crash down into some brambles. You'll see there's a running theme here of it crashing a lot. And this time when I recovered it from the brambles, I found that one of the propellers had stopped spinning. So I thought, okay, need to turn it off. Maybe I've got a bit of grass or something like that caught inside. So took it inside, took it, a, um, took it apart and found that there wasn't any problems. There wasn't anything caught inside it. In fact, what had happened was one of the motors had burned out. And this was a significant problem because when I started investigating it, a lot of modern drones, you can just switch out the motors. They expect this to happen occasionally. So you can just plug, um, they've got a quick plug you can just remove. However, the motors in the Quinox were the wires were soldered onto the main board and onto the motor. So you'd have to have a soldering iron and some expertise in order to be able to replace them. Not easy, not a nice thing to have to do. I then started doing a bit more research into it and in researching how to replace the motors and where to get them from, I found a lot of more reviews that had come out over the last year on the Quinox K8 where other people had been finding similar problems where they were like it said it should have obstacle avoidance but clearly doesn't it said it should have gps tracking but clearly doesn't a lot of the features the the drone said it should have a camera gimbal for making smooth videos for example they were just not there and when they started taking the drone apart and looking they clearly were just bits of plastic where pretending to be all of these extra sensors and things that it should have that it didn't. So it became clear that it was a bit of a scam. It really wasn't up for it. 
and in fact a lot of people saying it's not even that great as a toy because it's quite light it's expensive for a toy and actually quite difficult to fly which would end up putting people off trying to fly drones and just not being a great experience at all so it comes back to that old saying if it's too if it sounds too, too good to be true it probably is and in the case of this drone i would definitely say too good to be true avoid it like the plague don't buy one of these you need to be spending three or four times the amount to get a decent drone that does have all of those features in and if you get one of those it can be a great experience or you should only spend about a quarter of the price on buying a toy but then knowing it's only going to be a toy so what are we going to do from here well probably i'm not going to bother repairing this it's going to be more work and more time than it's worth we'll have to over the next year at some point get ourselves a new drone uh, one that does have all of those features and that I can then get the footage that I was hoping to get in this video for you. So you're going to have to watch this space for that one. In the meantime though we've got some new videos coming out over the next few weeks uh, where I'm doing a bit more work on the house and then we're getting onto the kitchen which we've been planning for a little while now. So thanks for watching, don't forget to like and subscribe, it really does help. We love reading all your comments and see you in the next video.